Okej, okay, så so det var så lot av people asking if you could take the aiming that I did in an earlier uh, little tutorial, if you could take it apart. And one of the problems people had was that they couldn't take it apart from, um, from the bottom plate and change the cardboard. And I agree, that wasn't um, the best way of doing it. And this probably isn't either. But a lot of people asked if I could do uh, another video tutorial and um, if there was a way to take them apart. And this is pretty much the simplest, the, the easiest way to do it. And usually the easier the better because the more complicated you do things, the easier it is that something goes wrong. So if you want to see how I did this, it's going to be a pretty long video. So... Pause now, go grab a drink and a snack or whatever you like, some coffee so that you can stay awake during the entire video. And um, let's get started. So the parts that you need are a chip of your choice, a lithium 3 volt battery, super glue, preferably hot glue, however I didn't have that right now so I went with the Carlsons Universal Clister, threaded wire, any wire that has threads in it, and also full core wire. As you can see here, this is a full core wire, it only has one thread inside. These are 3.2 volt, 20 milliamps surface mounted LEDs. Copper tape. So the battery is a CR1220 lithium 3 volt battery. And uh, the important part is that it fits under the stand. That's the only thing you need to worry about. It's about 1.2 centimeters. The LEDs are the uh, surface mounted 3.2 volt 20 milliamps blue LEDs. They, you can check them up at alpha.com. They have 75, 186, 96 as an item number. Just search for that in the search bar. And this is blue 3.2 volt 20 milliamps. So this is an LED that I cut loose from the strip. And uh, that's the LED, that's the little thing there. It's about a millimeter in width. As you can see, it does fit on the TIE Fighter. So the first thing that we want to do is make sure that the ship is pointing straight forward. When the ship is centered, glue the parts of the stand together, but not the bottom part, only the rods. Also make sure that they are firmly attached to each other. If you get excess glue, Make sure that you remove that so that you don't get a big blob. So this is the bottom part. This is the stand. The arrow points in the forward direction. We are going to drill four holes, two at each side, so that they line up with the channel in the center part of the stand. Cut some copper tape so that it fits in the channel and that you can thread it through the holes that you just drilled. Now cut some more copper tape for the other part and do exactly the same thing. Cut off any excess. And this is how it should uh, look when done. We will put the battery at the front of the stand under the arrow. Attach another piece of copper tape under the arrow at the front of the stem, like this. Add some flux to both pieces of the copper tape and solder them together. Try not to touch the stand with the soldering iron because it will melt the plastic. So this is how the battery will sit on the um, on the plate, bottom plate. Take a long strip of uh, copper tape. Attach the other copper tape part to the bottom of the plate. This will be the positive connection. Cut a wire, but leave some of the cable wrap on in the center. Shape the wire around the battery so that it looks something like this. Add another small piece of copper tape. There is already solder on the copper tape because I misjudged the distance. 
solder the two pieces together, then also solder the wire to the top part of the copper tape. It should now look like this. Add some flux and solder to the copper tape. Then connect them with a wire. Slide the battery into the battery connection that we made. Then shape the wire around the battery. Make a simple locking mechanism by soldering a piece of full core wire to a piece of copper tape. Attach the locking mechanism like this. If it doesn't stay in place you might have to super glue this later on. The base plate circuit is now complete and should look like this. Strip the entire threaded wire so that you get as long threads as possible. Cut off a couple of threads. This is optional but you can take a piece of painter's tape and fold it like this to make the soldering a little bit easier. This is the LED. The little arrow on the back should point towards negative. Place the LED on a tape and press it down a little bit so that it sits in place. It is time to solder one of the threads that we cut earlier. Put the thread into place and press it down a little bit to keep it in place. Take a little bit of solder on the soldering iron and then just dab it a little bit on the LED. Make sure that you do not use too much solder. Solder the second thread that we cut earlier to the other side of the LED. Make sure that the LED still fits in the ship's exhaust. If you use too much solder it might not sit well. If you use hot glue, or this glue in particular, it's easier to put the glue on before placing the LED. And here you can see that it still works. Try to hide the wires as well as possible. I ran them out to the dark areas of the ship and then down the bottom. Make sure that one wire is on the front of the stand and one wire on the back. The one on the back should be the positive. It should look something like this. I used a piece of tape to keep them in place. Put a little bit of super glue where the wires meet the top of the stand. It is now time to make the connectors. Take a pretty long piece of full core wire and strip it partially. Take the full core wire that we just stripped and place it so that the tip touches the back of the stand. Then hit the metal up with the soldering iron. It should start to melt through the stand. Let it melt until it comes out on the other side. Then do the same from the front. Avoid any air bubbles or the space where the rod connects to the base plate. Cut the wires as close as possible to the stand. You can put some super glue on where you made a cut so that you don't get a short. If you mess up you can still remove them by hitting them up again. Make a 90 degree bend on the wires downwards. Then twist them into a shape like this. We now need to solder the wires to the connector. To do this stretch the wire that is above each connector as straight as possible and then wrap it around the connector a few times at its base. Then solder it into place. Do this for both other connectors. Cut any excess wire off. Now put a lot of super glue above the wires to shield them from any harm. If you use any tape I recommend removing that before gluing. The better the glue will flow, the clearer it will be. Remove any excess but try not to smudge it around. Make sure that you cover the wires in glue so they are much less likely to break. But uh, try not to get any glue at the bottom of the rod because that will make it a lot harder to connect the rod to the base plate. 
If the glue is flowing too close to the bottom of the rod, turn the ship upside down so that it starts flowing towards the ship again. Make sure that you let the glue dry. Your ship should now look something like this. Make sure that you got a good connection between the LEDs and the connectors. I use a broken down digital watch as a temporary power supply. This gives 3 volts and is perfect for this project. If your connectors were very long, cut them down so they are a little bit shorter. Something like this. It is time to try it out and see if it works. You might have to push it down pretty hard to get a good connection. Now put the cardboard piece back and you are done. Leave me a thumbs up if you liked this video and also consider subscribing for more videos like this one. Thank you for watching and see you next time.